Be serious, are you? Say, yes, we are serious. So, yeah, collect their belt, collect their shoes. May they not hang themselves inside the cell. Lock them up, Papa. Since then, they've locked up these guys. A lawless country like Nigeria, they've not been allowed to possibly even go to the court. They've not been taken to court, but they've taken Binance to court in Nigeria. First, their owners of assembly or national assembly said it is appropriate for Binance for them to pay restitution. Nigeria is broke. Nigeria needs money. Some people have stolen money. So if 26 billion has been traded all on your platform by Nigerians, you need to give us their names. And if you can't give us their names, you have to pay us $10 billion. Man, those guys just burst into laugh. Like, are these guys being serious? People stole $26 billion in your country? And you believe that they actually transferred that through the Binance platform? And you do not have the names or any detail at all about these people? But we should provide you them. It's okay, don't worry. We know that you know maybe thousands of people use your platform. Let's make it easier for you. We are give us the... The details of the uh, top 100 Nigerians that uses Binance. What's this all about? Because our Naira is dying. Nigerian Naira is dying. We need dollars. We need money. Give us money. We hear that you are a very big uh, platform, billionaire platform. $26 billion was stolen from Nigeria, and we believe that it's, uh, it's been transferred through the Binance. Do you have any? We didn't even trade. $26 billion on Binance all over the world. Like the entire trade volume on Binance in 2023 was put at $7.1 billion. Where did you get this $26 billion stolen from Nigeria? And that is what killed Naira. Are you guys serious? Oh, we are serious. Oh. Ah, we are serious. Oh. Ah, our experts in Nigeria discovered this money. They cannot be wrong. They know what they are saying. The entire money traded uh, through a platform from Nigeria eh, under the, the, uh, in the year, under the review, right? It's $21.5 million, see? About Iloshi and what we Those who live on uh, propaganda. Do you think saying a propaganda will fix uh, an economy? Or propaganda will fix the security? Aleti Yawiri. That is why. Immediately, they said it's $21.5 million. Want to change the M to C B? It don't take time. They don't change the M to B. Eh? And some of them started like, yes, Divine and said $21.5 billion. What is the difference between $21.5 billion and $26 billion? So, which means Nigeria is right. Binance must pay $10 billion to rescue the Naira. If not, Naira, we not, we not release these guys. Unfortunate, right? And they are still at it. So their court now rule that Binance must comply. Yes, you must comply. You must comply with what uh, Tifnubu is asking for. You must give us the details of all Nigerians that are using Binance in this country. Or the top 10 traders. We need the name of the top 10 traders. But I even see top 10 traders. It's just that it's pretty much proxy. If not, I would say you can even get that online. But you don't even need too much technology to know who is the who are the top uh, crypto traders in Nigeria? It's just that it's going to be anonymous. You may not know their real name. But you can, I mean, they, they have the tool to know the names. It's because they are fishing. They are fishing. And even if Binance give them 10 billion, the money will disappear through Binance. Because the people wait, Binance give the money to. They go open their Binance app on their phones, eh? use VPN. The same criminal, so transfer the money to China or transfer the money to UAE through Binance. Convert them to crypto, hide them forever. Anyway, not just that though. I also saw where a Zibida uh, Onofunuga. So Onofunuga, the long truth, said, what is all this force? In fact, he actually asked uh, Peter Obi to apologize for making it a big deal that uh, 755 companies left Nigeria in the last 10 months alone on that tip number. Now, what is a big deal about that? Eh? Have you seen the latest on how many businesses are closing all over the world? In the UK, over 300,000 mini micro businesses closed shops. 
in 2023. This is by your Gao using the UK as a template too. That because businesses are also closing down in the UK. Eh? So why, why would you be so alarmed? In fact, Nigeria is doing far, 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 far better than a lot of you will acknowledge. China, over 10,000 companies shut down in 2023. In America, according to Bayo Nofunuga, over 440,000 businesses shut down in America. Alaye, this is the guy who is a presidential advisor. He is an advisor to Kolu Tifnumbuo. And he doled out this number and could, I mean, linked it to Bloomberg or so. And I am like, it must be some level of miracle that over 300,000 businesses shut down in the UK. And the UK is no longer, I mean, it's not currently eh, in crisis. There's not even evidence of uh, 320,000 people losing their job. Do you know what it means to say 320,000 businesses shut down in the UK? And you are flaunting down in the face of uh, the poverty capital of the world, the place where you have the most unemployed people, the high concentration. Nigeria is the highest concentration of the most unemployed people in the world, the jobless people's capital of the world, the poverty capital of the world. I live in the UK. So if they tell you that 320,000 businesses shut down in the UK in 2023, then that means we are looking at over a million people who have lost their jobs in the UK. That would have been a crisis for God's sake. But it is convenient. Nigeria only have over 750 companies shut down on that if Numbu. You should be praising him. Ha. Ah. Okay. Maybe we should praise him. Eh? Okay, I have one for you. The Inflation in the UK was 11.5 as at yesterday. But from the, all the indices that came back this morning, the I mean, sorry, the inflation in the UK dropped hugely to about three point something percentage. We are not celebrating it. It's not like we are even celebrating it here. A lot of us know what that means in the truest sense of it. Okay? I have already received several emails from some of my service providers alerting me that I'm going to be paying far, 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 far lesser than what, I, what I've been subjected to pay by the greedy capitalist of this country. They give the service. They be lost. They know you'll pay. I used to pay just about 90 pounds for my electricity. But at a point, they said now COVID. Later, they said now Ukraine, Russia. And in this last uh, four years, they have robbed us blind. But in between, back and forth, back and forth, right? When they tell you that something is changing, you would expect some changes across some certain things. And Of services, you just see them drop. Me, where they spend 90 pounds on electricity. What am I even saying? I used to spend about 70 pounds, 60 pounds on electricity, and then maybe 90 pounds on gas because I love my house baked, love it warm like a bakery. Sure, you get. So I used to spend just about 160 pounds, around 65 pounds for my lucky gas, and I was paying about 102 pounds for my council tax. We don't pay water. We don't pay water bill in the in, in Scotland. A few times people have actually asked, "Am ah, I you are you are mentioning all this bill? You didn't mention water." I said, "Come on, I live in Scotland, man. We don't pay water bill in Scotland. No. Shocking. No, it's not shocking, man. They have other way they rob us too, just to get the money out. Anyway, then in this country, everything changed." My council tax jumped to almost 160 pounds. My gas bill jumped to over 300 pounds in a month. I paid it. Horrible time. Very, very horrible, desperate time. But I paid, we paid. 
my electricity jumped to over 250 pounds in this country. But guess what? Part of the trick they played was that it doesn't really matter whether you have money or you don't have money. We will give you 60 pounds from your electricity bill for the next six months. So don't worry. So every time you are calculating how much you are paying every month for your bill, right? We will give you 60 pounds towards it. It doesn't matter. And they did. But they did. But we're still paying much. And then they told us, they said, the reason why this thing went up is because of Ukraine, of Russia. But we now have enough supply that will last us through the winter, including to the next summer. So therefore, the price of gas is going to come down. Oh, well, they will send you email. They send you everything and tell you. It's automatic. You don't need to do much. And right there, Baba, it will be like, say, and it, there's this feeling that comes with it. Okay? When the, when the economy makes some improvement and you're able to see the impact of that improvement on your own uh, family expenses and all that, that is life. That is what will determine if you are going to live well, if you are going to be sleeping well, if you are eating well, if you are all those things, right? Because they are basic and they are essential. They are important. So the system worked that way and say, oh, yeah. So I have received several emails now telling me that, have you heard that uh, the inflation has dropped drastically? Other things are dropping too. Interest rates on uh, loans are going to drop. Prices of food are going to drop, obviously. Mm -hmm. And now my own lucky and gas are going to drop. So I can sit down here and begin to save up to 200 pounds. Well, I don't think I can save up to that because they've reduced it, reduced it, reduced it to the point that my gas right now is pretty much about 200 pounds and my lucky is about 160 pounds. So if they cut me a deal, I may be saving about 80 pounds from both. Yes, I may be saving about 80 pounds. And guess what? 80 pounds is a lot of money too that could go into something else. Even my savings. That is how you read the economy. That is how you read the value of money. That's how you feel the value of money. When your government says something, when Naira goes up, for example, Nigeria is an import-dependent country. So since Nigeria imports a lot of things that they have to use, it simply means that you would have to suffer and devalue your own Naira because nobody is going to take the Naira from you. And whoever is going to give their own currency to buy something from them, they will give you at their own rate. And you have no choice. You just have to take it or you leave it. Abi, so Nigeria is a place where when the dollar goes up, things goes up. So how come when the dollar comes down, things don't come down? Have you asked yourself that? Eh? I mean, they tell you dollar, dollar, dollar. So when dollar goes up, things goes up. When dollar goes down, they stay up. It is called voodoo economy. Eh? And those you have in Nigeria are voodoo economists. Nothing makes any real sense in the real life. And that is why the only thing that is permanent is the shege. It shall be permanent. Hmm. It shall be permanent. This shege, okay, I don't want to wish you bad, okay? So this shege, they are like singing. The shege is singing to you like, I shall be permanent. I shall be permanent. What Kalu has done to you, oh, it shall be permanent. Reject it, oh, not you. Talking to the Abobakus that do not know that they are, in fact, destroying themselves. And they think they are destroying their imaginary enemies. Eh? So if 320,000 businesses shut down in the UK, as your own way of saying, well, our own is not bad. Our own is not bad. But the major companies, companies that are producing your medicals, medical, essential, when you import your medical, your, your medicine from abroad, you pay so much. But when they produce them locally, if it is conveniently, the economy is enough that uh, businesses are supported. The businesses are supported by government, not because they want to make the business owners make money. No, they want to make you leave every reasonable government. When they see put, I mean, when they see essential manufacturers, manufacturers of uh, food, manufacturers of uh, medicine, you do not let them pack up because your people will pay the price. 
So if they tell you, say, Shift Shop shut down in the UK, or Baba Shop shut down, can you compare that uh, with uh, a, you know, a manufacturing company that produces medicine, life-saving medicines for you? Can you compare a Shift Shop, uh, a fish and a ship's uh, shop that shut down in the UK with that? I'm just saying, you know, essential matter. So they want you to feel good. That it is not only in Nigeria that businesses are closing down. They are closing down all over the world too. So you should not be alarmed. Tell them that as uh, the inflation in Nigeria is said to be 31.7%, eh? the UK was 11%. It's now back to the single digit, 3%. And I am going to be a living witness to tell you, what does that even mean, Mayegun? You don't have no idea. You know, as the Tesco says, every penny counts, every little help. And now if you had somebody with a make legit money, yeah, legit money, no be, no be stolen money or fraud money or corrupt money. Every penny counts. They do. And that is how it should be in a place when they tell you that the reason why things are like this is because of this. And if that thing changes, your situation should change, Abby. They will continue to lie to you and lie to you and lie to you and lie to you. And it's so sad that even those who are lying to you are beginning their own lie. I mean, they are believing their own lies. See, if, if I'm lying to you right now, I am not supposed to believe my own lie. The moment I begin to believe my own lie, because if I lie to you, you will believe me. Many of you will likely believe me. So you go, but I will know that I'm lying. But the worst thing, eh, the, 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 uh, baba, the, the saddest thing that can happen to any individual in this life is to, for you to begin to believe your own lie. Problem to Daniel. Eh? Eh? Okay. Like I said, my line is open. And I, you know me, I can talk like this for hours. But it won't really gel well if it is not conversational, okay? You can be part of it. The number to call is on your screen. Call in and add your view if you really want to, all right? Meanwhile, I am going to uh, take a mini break. Not long. I'll be back. Oshoni, Ajeni, Elebologuni, Amani Senini, Afaimani Senini, Wafi, Insile. I think I have a caller. Uh, hello there. Are you there? Yeah, my good general. Good morning, <laughs> Baba. How are you? Yeah, good morning from here. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, my good. <laughs> my good. 
Uh, good morning. I'm calling here from uh, Kansas City, from uh, USA, from America. Right. Um, I want to thank you very, very, very much for educating us, to lighten us, to see the whole space of Nigeria. As I don't call it Nigeria because calling it a zoo is an understatement. Because when you have a criminal, they're championing them as the leaders or whatever. You know that country is beyond a Nazi Germany. is way beyond the Nazi Germany country. Mario, did you see what I was listening to your program because I've been trying to get calling and, you know, because people always want to call in to, to, to lay their own view of what's going on in the zoo. You know, speaking of what happened in Delta State, did you know the Nigerian media? These people, I don't know where they, for example, look at the, this guy called himself uh, Uberta Bati. This guy is an ex scam. He went to jail for corruption and all this stuff. Still, they have audacity to put this kind of the Nigeria, whatever, there's a news or whatever they call it. And if you look at those people, they can see a black and call it white. Mm -hmm. They see a brown, they call it yellow. And you kind of wonder, are you still living on the, these people, do you still live on the same country they call to Nigeria with these people? And he, I can see most time people come in, they say they love their great country, Nigeria. I see sometimes people come to your show and say their great country, Nigeria. And I was like, there's no way I can, I can ask these people, how did Nigeria created on the first place? <laughs> and they can't even answer that question. How did Nigeria, how did Nigeria come about? You know, when you listen, as we are in America, man, we know how America come along. And they fighted the civil war, and they fighted the state war. All those wars, they fighted it because of what they believe in. If we talk about Nigeria, how did Nigeria create it? Do we, do we fight for Nigeria? Do how the name of Nigeria came along with this, this country where they take all these jihadis, all these terrorists from everywhere, from around the north or whatever, they pull all, us together as a one Nigeria. How did they come about? Are you be proud to call yourself as a Nigeria? Me myself, I know be I know be Nigeria. I know I know the I'm a dear friend. I have to and that's why I, 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 can, no, I can't fault I, you because if you value your mental health, right? It is not something you say as yeah. I am proud Nigeria. Come on, man. Can we stop pretending, man? What are you proud about or what are you proud of about Nigeria? Let's be honest, but people are dishonest, Mazi. People are just dishonest. Yeah, and yeah, and when you look at what they did in Delta State, this military. They went over there and slaughtered every human being, everything that moved. Yes. And these people in this media, they take call them a hero. You know, they call Nigerian military as hero when they kill their own citizens. Honestly. When they slaughter every of their citizens. Yeah. The, what work they, See, our, they our can put on the... We need, we need to protect our... We need, we need to defend our hero. Soldiers are our hero. If they all stop which and say hero, they're not which... protecting us anymore, eh? the terrorists will just take over everywhere. So... Is that and a threat? Center of, like, you know what I mean? Like, is that a threat? So if the Nigerian military says threat. they are not protecting anybody threat. anymore, uh, police say they are not is protecting it? you anymore, eh? everybody will just be like, is that a threat? Are, we, are, you, are you making that threat? It's so ridiculous, right? Nobody is safe, not and even not, the police. And now they corrupted the whole, uh, uh, the whole priorities of uh, security in yeah. that country. Uh -huh. Now, what the security does, they protect the criminal. That's only their job. That's right. Any any individual or citizen want to start against them, kill him. Kill. And the people come over open man, they say I'm proud of their hero and they're proud of being in a world. They're sick mental sick. And think, what, what I think about I figure out this maybe these people is the one they are they are have a, a you know, let me I don't know how to use maybe the bastards. You know, give it back to these people where they come over and say they are proud of Nigeria and they are they are love Nigeria. Tell me what what is yeah, the thing love of the country yeah, that you can love? The country you can love is the country that dies for you. They take their citizen as the number one soul. It doesn't matter what level that citizen is. It doesn't matter whether the person have money, the person is, you know, the person is, 
He loved Nigeria at the time. The whole school, my I went to Nigeria last year. There is no any government school. There is no school in Nigeria. About half of the country is more more educated as any kind. And the same police people and the army, which country that army can come on, go on the road and say it's a roadblock? Which even the, the Africa that we know of, the militarized or passport to go on or the whole West Africa, you cannot even see army going over there. They're over there by the border side. These criminals, they call them heroes or whatever, yeah, which is we all know yeah, because it's the, our heroes, our heroes. Yes, yeah. so come on, man. The what, you, the, the, the worst part of it, this, this, this idiot, these bastards, they was there when the Buhari and his gang, they were recruiting all the whole terrorists into their, into their armed forces. Uh -huh. Into the, any, any armed forces in the Nigeria the now. now. So, yes, they recruit, recruit them. And this idiot, this, all this, because when I went over there, you see all this roadblock in the eastern region. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was driving, when they stop, I would just pull over, ask them, hey, soldier, how are you doing? He said, fine. I said, yeah, let me ask you, which, which state are you from? They would tell me, if they're talking about Kaduna, Zaria, um, Samfara, all those inside, inside, northern region, the men see I, the men jihadist northerners, mm -hmm. they're all of them full in the southeast. Like wearing uniform. That they are soldiers carrying are, gun, and they have been told, gun, right that the, the whole these people, is these people right. they are not human, so kill them anytime you want. How can you die? That, That's how, what how they were talking call that Nigerian soldiers, Nigerian army, whose intention with the hatred. With see, I saw the face of one of them one day. I was like, Oh my god, I could I could I could see the hatred, right? Trying to it's pop out of his them. eyes, his eyeballs, like. And he's a soldier. We kill all of you. IPOB, come out. He's shouting IPOB at a village. We are elderly people, in harmless civilians. He said, IPOB, come out. We kill you. We kill you today. All of you. Any IPOB that come out, we kill you. A soldier. Nigerian soldier. God damn it, and, man. And first part, when they do that stuff, they deny them. What they do, they yeah. recruit them. At, and these people, they're not even educated. They don't yeah. even know. They don't them the law and the, and they didn't even know that every citizen in that country have a right to defend themselves because what they under understand because what they keep saying because Nigeria is known as the terrorist number one and the terrorist savers because every citizen have a right to defend itself and they also every citizen have a citizen arrest but when you see somebody in uniform committing a crime they didn't have a right to arrest that person that is what they don't know, but they will talk about the jihadists, everything they do. Look at the northern side, terrorists of all kinds, all kinds of form. They're over there leveraging the whole area. There you can't see army going over there, burning the house, because they're doing all those stuff. But we don't know that we are at war with the terrorist northern and the terrorist government in power. Every citizen in that country called Nigeria have a right to defend himself and also have a right to bear arms for his own safety defense. Yes. Because these people are criminals, they don't know where they came from and they recruit them. They don't even have an ID card to identify what state and what 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 the division they, they, they came from on the army or what they didn't even have an ID card to come in all this they just see them with a gun and the uniform. It doesn't mean anything to me. You have to have that ID card that sells up your name before even here. Or anywhere in Africa country, West Africa country, before a soldier comes, you have to have an ID card to, to identify yourself as a soldier. And with that ID card, it will tell you every information where that soldier you know, came your, from. Your, your uniform number what? or your, your, what's yeah, your even, first number or if, something like that. Even the uniform number doesn't mean anything. I need that ID card because the reason why I said is the same fool of the mouth, the fool of these criminals, they send them out. When they're in office, they wear their ID card. When they go into their office, they show up their ID card. The uniform doesn't mean anything. Every soldier or police, all these criminals, they pull out the southeast or uh, west. They send up a roadblock. They should be having their ID card because if you don't, that means you have the right to do a citizen arrest, and you also have the right to defend yourself at all costs. Because those people, you take them as a regular citizen or a regular criminal doing their criminal job, where they don't have to. 
And every every person in that country have uh, if they listen to me, you have right to defend yourself because those people they're standing there, and most of them they are all bastards. And when person die, that is it. There's no, no second let's, life. Let's, let's, no, let's let's let, yeah, let's replay that side again. Let's react it again. No, you are gone. You're gone. So it is ideal you for you that if you want to go out, you should go out in a way that is by your own making. I have people who said that, yeah. uh, you know, if I'm going to go down in a country like Nigeria, right, I would rather go I down, uh, what do you call it? Somebody will be. If I have I'm to not go down, down for one I'm not going to wait to be killed. Hmm. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that crime, crime is a good thing, but sometimes to be safe and to be safe, you know, uh, you know, what did 